Welcome to the Mind, Body, Soul podcast. I'm delighted to have Thomas Ennis on today. Uh, Thomas is a, an inspirational business leader who I've had the pleasure of actually uh, having mentor me over the last year uh, through the Back for Business uh, initiative, um, which was which was excellent for returning entrepreneurs to Ireland. So Thomas is a runner, Ironman, boxing coach, Stones fanatic. Uh, he is a he's built a spa empire here in Ireland. So that's uh, for people listening in who aren't from Ireland. And that's a, an amazing chain of stores uh, that he has around Ireland. And I'm just delighted that he's on today talking to us about um, the influence of sport on his entrepreneurial journey and what we can learn um, across getting a sort of balance for your health in terms of being entrepreneurial. So a massive welcome, Thomas, and thanks for coming on. No problem, Declan. Thanks for having me. So Thomas, I was uh, just doing a bit of research on you over the weekend and we were looking, I saw uh, just it's when you talked about sparring in the ring, taught you discipline to help build your your, your spar emperor and I like the, the play on words there, but could you explain what kind of was meant by this and, and what you had learned from your, your boxing life that you took with you into business? Yeah, well, well boxing, I always have, have said that uh, boxing saved my life. Um, you know, I grew up in a fairly, it was rough, but it was, you know, it, was, it had its challenges. But boxing as a sport, I suppose it helped me uh, channel some of the, the madness that I had into good. So yeah. boxing, I, I loved it, you know, it gave me great discipline. Uh, it's a great sport. Uh, you know, most boxers, uh, you'd never ever hear of them boxing outside of a ring were very much disciplined of the sport and the art of boxing because boxing is an art it's a skill but using that in the gym you know you'd never mm. ever hear of a, a proper boxer using what he learns in the gym outside the gym so from a sense of um, me as a young man it gave me great discipline uh, when it steered me away from the uh, I suppose the, the the test of life in, in a mm. kind of an area that's a bit nuts you know so it kind yeah. of gave me great and to kind of keep me focused, uh, bringing that into into business life and sparring. I don't know whether you've ever been in a ring, Declan. Um, or I haven't. Actually, I haven't. You haven't. Actually, actually sparred someone. So there's this kind of this 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 kind of wrong thought process on boxers being fighters. You know, and we are fighters. And boxers do fight. But also, we're very clever, very smart people. And you're constantly, when you get into the ring, before you even get into a ring to fight somebody, you're already playing the mental game of trying to out, you know, out-think him, out-smart him. Mm. Uh, you kind of anticipate what he's going to do. So in a ring, the bell goes, and straight away you're looking at your opponent. What's he or she? Well, she, it wasn't a she. What's he yeah. going to do next? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, where are you going to move to? Uh, what are you going to throw? How are you going to counteract that? Um, how fit are you? How fit are they? Uh, mm. How's your mind to be able to get in the you know get in the fight? And are you ready? Um, mm. What happens when you're not ready? I've often got into the ring where I wasn't ready. You get hurt. So bringing that into business in the sense that you're trying to outsmart your opponent on the high street. So you're, you're mm. you know it, it kind of gives you that discipline of being ready. You know, and we had a motto in the club. Uh, Mick Dowling was my coach. Oh, amazing. Temple yeah, Oak. Yeah, uh, he's the yeah, store yeah. in Temple Oak Village. <laughs> correct, yeah. Or Turner Village, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he had a, he was a tough coach. Tough, tough coach. But we had something on the wall. Train hard, fight easy. So we trained exceptionally hard. And your mm. fight was easy. I'm sure like you and your sports and your sporting days, the harder you train, the easier the competition or the match becomes. Yeah, yeah. So for yeah. me, for in business, I, uh, you know, and the, the, Generation now probably are smarter than me, and they they work smarter. But for me, when I was starting out, train harder, work harder was long days, and mm -hmm. the, the harder and longer you worked, you become the became battle worn to being self employed. So mm -hmm. I think that experience of boxing and uh, keep myself in good shape, uh, training hard, uh, trying to constantly outthink my opponent, mm -hmm. came with me into business in the sense that I worked extremely hard, still do, as you know. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's part of of 
being an entrepreneur, as you know, it's not a word I like using, but mm, being yeah. employed and working for yourself, working hard uh, is the trick, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And smart, but hard work. Uh, and I think it's it's something that, you know, this idea of the four-hour work week, like, I, I just think it's a load of rubbish, you know what I mean? I know that we talk about working smart, but you couldn't be working that smart, like, in terms yeah. of it's about being, as you say, it is about working hard and um obviously like you got to put in the hours as well when you're when you're yeah. passionate about it and i know you helped all of us with our ideas to realize that as well yeah. um but the, so i was gonna have, ask you yeah, yeah yeah sorry sorry i was gonna ask you about in the ring would you have yeah. would there have been mental mind games going on do you know which is would, would there have been kind of you know the way you hear on the football pitch you hear a sledging and fellas whispering no, in never, the ears and never never, never. i 60 odd 70 uh amateur competitions and uh, no never there was none okay. of that ever this conception the misconception of boxers you know there was never any none of that shit there was none yeah. of it the absolute respect we had for each other was, was unbelievable you see some of the the different uh fighting sports now not boxing and the way they talk and speak to each other is disgraceful you know yeah, we, were brought up young athletes. we were brought up as young athletes to respect your opponent there was no sledging. There was none of that. There was no. There was none of that at all, Declan. There was. It was very much. You, we knew most of your opponents, unless you were boxing abroad, and uh, you kind of you just had that respect for them, you know. And then when the bell went. You just wanted to beat them, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. You wanted to beat you, but there was no never. And I'll be honest with you, Mick Dowling wouldn't have tolerated that as a coach. And I suppose mm -hmm. that was a great life lesson for me. That his whole thought press process was: you train hard. You're able to fight. You should be able to do it. You don't need to bring that bullshit into it. You know what I mean. So that was kind yeah. of that was our. our so name. you had a you had a great coach on that side of things, and, and yeah. I think uh, a book that you steered all of us towards for our businesses was Crowning the Customer. So you had uh, Fergal Quinn on the other side of things. So you, yeah. I suppose, you had no shortage of good influences on on both sides of the fence. Would that be fair to say on the sporting side and the business side? Yeah, I was very lucky. Um, you know, I was a young apprentice butcher, and I had a guy in FX Buckley's in Moore Street called John Collins, who's still, still there, actually. Mm -hmm. And he gave out to me the last time I was talking to him because I mentioned Fergal Quinn as a mentor, and he said, you never you never mentioned me, so I have to mention John Collins in FX okay. <laughs> Moore Street. And uh, me and my best friend, actually, both of us were apprentices together. And it was only as we got older we realised the influence that he had on guiding us through the bit of madness we were as teenagers, you know, mm. and kind of helping us and just small bits of information on helping you navigate through life, really. I suppose. Yeah. So I've been very lucky. Now, maybe you just gravitate to these people, but also as well, you know, you listen and I'm good at listening and I'm good at picking up what I feel would be beneficial for me. Yeah. And John Collins as a young apprentice was great to us. And another guy, John Fury, uh, Morris mm. Smith. Kelly, all really good, good people. They're still around today. And obviously, yeah. Brenda Quinn, uh, Cormac Tobin, John Claus, he does, the list goes on of, of people in business that yeah. would be very good to me. But I listen to them. So yeah. I suppose that's probably, uh, we're not really good at giving ourselves any praise, but it was to compliment myself on anything. It was the fact that I listened. Because I watched yeah. what they were doing. I watched what they were doing and I wanted to be yeah. Do you know what I mean? I and would you say, do you know when you're working with people, like, I probably found it with yourself as well, it's, I suppose you have to find the balance as well of also, like, no matter who they are, you still have to sort of have a critical eye. You can't, you can't take everything for gospel, right? Because as you say, you have to take what works for you then from it. You can't just say, yeah. right, because he's doing that, I'm going to do that. If you know what I mean, it's kind of... Yeah. Because we're different. We're all yeah. different. You know, and uh, but the only thing is that people can tell you is give you their experience of what they of, of how they uh, approach the situation, how they tackle the problem, and they'll give you their experience. Their experience, and mm -hmm. it's up to you then whether you want to say, okay, I might go about it that way, but I like how they did it, but I can approach it a different way. You don't yeah. have to do everything they do, but it's also good to listen to people that that have that experience before you because you know. Every day is a school day. We're always learning. Yeah. Always something that you can learn. Nobody knows everything, you know. Yeah. And the day you stop learning, I suppose, just give up what you do. Yeah. <laughs> do something else. So, you know, I'm 30 years in retail and 18 of them for myself. And 
mm. you're learning something every day or you're doing something different or you're picking up a new skill and that doesn't yeah. leave Declan. And, and if your mind and if your mind is open to that as in you're constantly learning i think that's that's half the battle you know amazing so like a growth mindset and i actually love your your whatsapp profile photo is kind of like comparing you to you yes and, and that's obviously a big thing you live by then yeah, because I don't care about anyone else, Declan. And and the problem is, and I feel sorry for people that are caught up in that social media kind of world. Thankfully, it passed me. And they're so fucking worried about, um, you know, likes and favorites. And am I doing this right? And at this point, I have four kids, so I know all about yeah. it. You know, yeah. Is this right? Does that look well? How does this? No one cares. No one really cares. You is the only person that you have to keep happy. So, mm. it, you know, and, and it's like my, my thing, it's the Iron Man for swimming, you versus you. So mm. there's no one else out there except you, you, you know, mm. and if you mind yourself, look after yourself, do everything for you, everybody else benefits from that. So you have to put you first. So that's I always, Love it's it. always been my kind of front and foremost is yourself. If you're good, everything else will be okay. You know? and, and that's the thing, right? Because you give to people, I know the mentorship you gave us, that's, that was free of charge. That's something you're doing with your own time and that, but you, yeah. you'd be bringing your best self to that because you're looking after yourself outside yeah. of, of, of that. So I was going to ask you, you actually told us a great, uh, a great story about uh, a choice you made that set you apart from, from some of the lads you went to school with. Um, if you remember, could you let the, the yeah. listener, listeners know about it? Yeah. Well, I grew up in a place, um, uh, uh, Knockmore Drive in in uh, Killinard and Talley, and uh, my folks are pretty cool, but they're very very strict on sport. So I, I like everybody else uh, played football badly. So hurling and boxing were my two sports. I was really bad at football. So I, I always used to know if they were knocking in for me to get up to play football, they must have been down to ten men. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, and I, I never followed soccer, even to this day, I only do it because my my son follows it. I've no interest in soccer really. Yeah. But, and so um so I was always in sport and there's fellas I went to school with that weren't and um they got caught up, they got caught up in drugs, and there was two fellas that I went to school with uh, that lived across the road from me, a guy called Kevin McGabe and another guy called Mark, Mark McGowan. And this this is known in the area, it's in the papers. Mm. That uh, Mark stabbed Kevin for three pound fifty, or you mm. know, wherever it was, in an argument, it was manslaughter over drugs. Yeah. You know, and these so are fellas. Sad, went, these are fellas I went to school with. So that that mm. kind of story. So that was over thirty years ago, but that still sticks with you about choices, about my choices to get involved in sports and keep busy. I suppose I'd have my my parents to thank for that. Really, that yeah. they would keep me busy in sports and I kind of you kind of know the right and the wrong and I was lucky enough that you just picked sport a sport that I liked that I was good at and that kept mm -hmm. me busy seven days a week that I didn't go down the path which was there and it's there for most people really yeah and you know yourself drugs don't have a social barrier it's everywhere and yeah exactly yeah yeah you know, so it just so happened to be where I grew up that time that the heroin was rampant and then mm. two guys got, got caught up in it. They had the same education as me up all through primary school, you know. So, um, but they, I firmly believe that the sport part of it was the, yeah. the deciding factor between me being busy and training and then not doing anything really except yeah. wandering around and whatever you know and i think like sports so important because it gives you somewhere to put your energy towards and also when you mention about the code of the boxers you being part of it and the people you're coming up against having that code of you know not using boxing outside of the ring do you know what i mean yeah. it was a discipline yeah. and yeah. I, I must say i love that and um, another thing i know you're massively into now is the the iron men um i was actually going to ask you do you have a preference between the the run like the run and the swimming and the cycling is there one that you kind of gravitate towards or have you yeah. kind of come to like them all equally well, no i hate swimming i fucking hate it but well, they, <laughs> they um like it's gas about you know in 2015 a guy that i train with i have a small group of fella ronan mcdermott uh colin mccarthy and Colin sullivan that's the little group that i train with 
So I've done my marathons with uh, Ronan and uh, he had suggested in 2014, why don't we do a triathlon? And I couldn't swim. So I could swim on holiday. So in 2014, <laughs> I was 40. So, but I could holiday swim from one side of the pool to the other. So mm. I, got, I got lessons uh, in Alza of a guy called Peter Conway who trains mature uh, mm -hmm. athletes. And he always tells the story that he was kind of jumping after me. He thought it was drowning when he said to me to swim. You know, yeah. I, I could not swim. So I had to learn how to swim. Mm. My first triathlon was trying V in Mead. And, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I, speed. I remember driving out Ronan and Sinead looking at the boys out in the lake. And I remember saying, what are they? And them saying, you have to swim to them and then swim around. And I went, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, very funny. It's very funny because I was in the water and the the, the helpers in the canoes come up beside me and asked me, was I okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. And they said, who are you talking to? I said, I'm talking to myself. But when I stopped talking <laughs> to myself, then you have a problem. I think, <laughs> I, think, I think I was second or third last out of the water. And yeah. I got them on the bike, but I got them on the run. So nice. as, a, as a boxer, um, and all we did was run. Running is my favorite, but I love cycling, you know, mm, mm. And I, swimming, but I know I can do it, you know, so yeah. I don't have to fear. Probably took me, I would imagine, a year or a year and a half before I wasn't afraid of swimming. Up yeah. in the land, I was terrified, terrified, like, you know, right. just getting into the water, I was terrified, you know, but then yeah. you just overcome that with, with, with kind of practice and experience and challenging yourself and mm. doing and stuff like getting dropped at Ireland's eye in a, in a trawler and swimming back to the hold. Did you do that swim? Because that's yeah, just across yeah. from me here. I often wonder how people do it. Oh, amazing. It's, it's looking mad, you know. Yeah, but, uh, yeah so you kind of you overcome your fears by challenging mm -hmm. them and facing them. So, yeah, so swimming was my, my uh, was and is the one I don't like. How, how do you fare with it now, it. just out of interest? Are you yeah, still... I'm, would you would you be would you've noticed your times improving? Like, um, would yeah. you be still coming out last or no, more in no. the middle of the pack? Or I I don't care how I come out of it. I come out yeah. of it not wrecked. I used to be wrecked coming out because that was yeah. fear. that was fear. You know, it was fear was eating away in my my energy reserves. So that's mm. gone. So I come out of it fresh. I've no problem doing it. I can do any distance uh, two, three, four, five k. The distance is not an issue. I'm not afraid of yeah. it. But I know no. when I get out of it, once I get on the bike, I'm grand. And once I start running, I, I, yeah. you know, I'm okay there. That's know? when you're real, you're real people in as yeah, well. Yeah, I kind of just, I kind of, I enjoy the running. I'm not afraid. Yeah. I've done 20 odd marathons, you know, so I'm not afraid of the running and I enjoy yeah. it. Amazing. I don't care about time, Declan. Uh, yeah. as, you, as you said earlier on, it's you versus you. So mm. I will do my best on that day. And if my best is a good time, great. If my best is not a good time, so be it. But all I know is every time I compete, I do my best. So yeah. I don't, I don't I care about anything else after that, you know? I love it. I love it. Um, so, you know, like when you look at the... And I want to. I do want to talk to you a bit about your, your business lessons as well. But as an Ironman, has that reinforced the same lessons as... As boxing, I suppose with the with the swimming, you obviously showed the the bravery of kind of every day is a learning day and beginner's mindset to go into that. Let's say quite late uh, and learn that. But have you learned new lessons from Ironman than you did for the boxing, or did it kind of reinforce the same lessons that you had taken from from boxing? Well, it's like everything else, and I suppose it, it comes into your business as well. You know, if you practice and if you train, you put the time in. You know, you, you do your swim, you do all your training, you tick all your boxes, then everything should mm -hmm. work. You know, if you, so I have a good coach, uh, go yeah. down, Stephen Moody, he, he's a good coach. So if you do everything that he asks you to do, it will definitely follow through into your performance. So mm -hmm. it's no different to work. Um, you got to be on time. You got to be up there. You got to, you got to be there. You got to make sure that you're prepared for your day. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to sleep. People forget how important sleep is. Sleep is probably the most important part of anybody's day, but we don't realize it. A good night's yeah. sleep is so good for your brain, so good, good for your body. You mm. know, it, that's for me, that's the secret for me training and work is sleep, you know, mm. and people don't realize the importance of a, of a good night's sleep or a proper sleep pattern. 
So mm -hmm. if you all of these things are, if you do them all properly and if you do them all as the way you should do them, it absolutely follows you into business. There's no doubt in my mind that training, being physically fit, absolutely sharpens your mind. I don't drink. You're not lethargic. You're waking and up sharp. Yeah. You do a session. You go into like we could be in the pool for half five, six. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. a row. We could be out for a run. You're back into the office, into work, and you, you are firing for the day. Now you're mm. dead by nine o'clock, but you're firing <laughs> for the day. Yeah. And you know, it is so important. And yes, the disciplines that you learn as a triathlete, uh, a marathon runner, a boxer, yourself as a footballer, Declan, I mean, you mm -hmm. can ask yourself the same question. The skills that you were as a high performing footballer, they definitely followed you into your work life because mm -hmm. they gave you discipline. If yeah. I need to yeah. at 8 o'clock, I'm there at 10 to 8. If I need to two hours, I do two and a bit hours. If I need to eat right, I'm going to eat right. You know, and, and all of these yeah. things, all part of it and if you get into a situation where you're comfortable doing these things it most definitely follows you through into wherever life you choose uh, mm. business life private life it just helps your, your mind is clearer it's fresher your body's fresher and it, it just it just definitely benefits you as a businessman or business and do you Thomas do you find it easy do you know because that's a busy day when you get to the end of your day and I know you you're managing people as well at work. So you have, you know, you have to manage that side of things. You've got a lot of personalities working for you. And at, at, how do you switch off then in the evening? Do you, how do you draw a line under your day? And then, do you know what I mean? Cause I know a lot of people probably in COVID as well, in terms of the mental health and, and getting sleep and getting rest, maybe struggle with that when they're you know, high, ener high energy people or. Put that down, put the phone down, put it down. That's, mm. that's, that's the trick. Put your phone down. That's how you switch off you know i don't have my phone beside me it's it's it's, it's on a, a table in, in the room so it doesn't matter yeah. turn off your phone read a book i think i said it you have four kids so my son always has something on you're dropping the kids somewhere there's something on do you know what i mean you are busy yeah. and you do switch off so i'm 18 years working for myself Declan. it took me mm -hmm. nine years nine years eight to nine years to learn how to switch off i yeah. couldn't do it I was a disaster for the first <laughs> two or three years. I think I told you this before. I don't know how my wife put up with me. I don't know how my staff worked with me. I was 24-7 and it was wrong. I, I'd have been a fucking, fucking heart attack waiting to happen if I didn't reassess my life yeah. at that time because it was 24-7, cameras on the laptop, ringing shops, and it was crazy stuff. You cannot mm. do it. And you function better as a business person by turning off, getting out of your business, going for a run, turn off your phone, put your phone down, don't reply to emails after a certain time, and be just just become disciplined. Love it. You know, and it's just discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, turn off your phone, don't receive emails at a certain time, just turn everything off. You and know, did you like, hit a point of burnout, Thomas, or was it just more that you kind of it was kind of like, no, I just, I can't keep doing this. Like, was it, was it a gradual thing? You're just like, right, I'm going to change my habits bit by bit here. Or did you reach a point yeah. where you're like, I'm just knackered here. I can't keep doing this. Oh, I wasn't tired because I was a big engine, you know. Yeah, that. yeah. I, you know, I was becoming an arsehole deck. Do you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, my manager, my GM, Sandra, uh, she fucking gave it to me between the eyes one of the days. She said, I can't work for you. You're mad. You know what I mean? And I, you know, and I, I kind of said, you just look back at it and you can't do it on your own. You know, mm. you need people around you. You can't do it on your own. My wife is dead cool. But I knew if you were constantly at, at that pace, even she, you know, people are just going to say, okay, this is, okay, you have nice, you have nice trappings from generating your business mm. and a good quality of life. But it means jack shit if you're a cranky, mm. grumpy fucking yeah. asshole. I didn't want to be that person. I just didn't want to be that person. Mm. So I, you know, you just kind of change and you adapt and, you, and running. And I was coaching with McDowell and I went back coaching, went back oh, boxing and being around that and, and getting away from my business for a couple of hours a week actually made me a better business person by stepping away from it. Yeah. It, 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 because it can consume you. I think I said it to you guys a few times. And if it becomes 24-7, they are in trouble. So you, you yeah. have to be able to say, okay, it's six o'clock. That's it. 
done. Yeah, also a couple of things that I remember as well was just your your positive disposition in the sense of you wanted people coming with uh, solutions to problems and not problems to solutions. Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, there, there was another one that um, – like that that you'd mentioned to us is obviously yeah because when you're so invested in your business was yeah learning also to to sort of put the phone down at a certain point and then you know and then know when to know when to take that little break at a certain cut off moment in your in your evening and I thought that was really important as well you know you become a better person Declan you become a better a better partner to to whoever that that person is in your life you become a better business person but. Put the business to one side. That that's not the be all and of life. You become a better person for you. Mm. You know, mm. it's all about you. If you're yeah. good, everything else is good. You become mm-hmm. a better person for you, and you just kind of it, it takes a while. It took me a long time, but I'll never go back to that. I have opportunities to open up. We're opening up another store this year. Oh, I've, had over, I've had opportunities over the years to open a lot more, get involved in other things. And I weighed up the balance of, okay, will this affect my work balance life? And I said, yeah. And I went, nah, don't need it. I don't need that. You know, and some people like it. I like the balance I have now. I was running with my wife this morning. Yeah. I run my horn Saturdays. You know, I go for them yesterday. And you have different things. I cycle with Ronan and Connor every Sunday. So you have, diff- you have different things. We run every tour thing. We sell uh, and you like to get to see the Stones every now and again as well. Yeah, yeah. Seven times last year, Declan. That's, that's <laughs> so that's your, that's, your, that's your rejuvenation and restoration between bouts of effort, isn't it? That, that, that's my golf, yeah. 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 So, yeah, the, the Stones, obviously, you know. I tell you, I, I brought my wife to see them last year in Leon, and um, I was economical with the truth. <laughs> I told her, do you want to go to the south of France for a romantic weekend away and she thought I, I, I was a fucking hero you know yeah and my eldest girl ratted me out and she said ma'am you know that <laughs> oh, would you believe it the stones yeah. are on as well <laughs> so yeah I love, love, I love the stones but again that, that's my out you know that's one of my yeah out. and we all need it we all need something right in terms yeah. of that uh, and the exercise and actually, just interesting to, to know then, uh, Thomas, would you have would you have advice for your, your younger self? Because you mentioned, you know, the first few years in business there being particularly tough. Or do you believe that everything happens for a reason? Um, you know, like well, gas, I'd be interested to get your outlook. It's gas. I was, talking, I was talking to myself, which I do a lot of that as well. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing I meant to say. You told yeah. us if, if you're not talking to yourself, then uh, there's something wrong. <laughs> I like that as well. Yeah, yeah. Like talking to yourself is so cool. <laughs> My wife's used to it now. I would run through every scenario in the shower about what my day, if I'm having a meeting and I think it's going to be a difficult meeting, I could be out running and I could, I'd have that conversation with myself about the meeting. Yeah. And that's brilliant. It just tees up your mind and gets you ready for that yeah. meeting. If someone's going to ask you a tricky question instead of pausing. You've already asked yourself that question. Nice. Here. I love that. Yeah. So it's it is, a, it's a form of self talk, is it? A little bit like what, or, or like role play almost. Like, what am I going to say in this scenario kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's very kind of top level simplistic kind of stuff you yeah. know what I mean I don't deep dive into it you know yeah but um, I don't know that because I when you I seen that question from you what would you do differently but if I did something different when I was younger would I be sitting here talking to you now mm. uh, probably mm. not you know yeah uh, so our, your life is your life is kind of I feel you go on a path with your life and you, you just go with it and you take chances, you take the opportunities uh, and they kind of happen as you're moving. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I opened my second yeah. shop in 2008 and closed in 2000 and sold it. And, you know, I could have went under. I was paying the debt off that for two years and thankfully, uh, Spar Ireland, BWG, fucking gave me good credit terms to be able to do that. I couldn't have been able to mm-hmm. do it without the support of them. So you were able to Trying to get through it, but some people probably would have said no. That's, that's what I mean. I think about that exact example. Yeah. Some people might let that cripple them or put, put them under. What would be your advice to somebody? I know a lot of people would say the mentality is innate, but what would you say to people who have had a sort of a tough blow like that, maybe in the last year or two? Just yeah, you know. it's a tricky one, Declan, because as you know, I do the back for business where you're volunteering your time to mentor people. It's my sixth year doing it. Yeah. 
and every year you get a different group of people and uh, some of them strong, some of them need to work a little bit on, on some other, other parts of their business. Mm. But for me, I think the upbringing that I had and where I lived and where, where I grew up and, the, you know, what you would have seen growing up gave me that toughness yeah. that just keep going. Boxing. Yeah. Boxing gave me that tough, toughness when you're in a spar with Paul Griffin, a double European gold champion, and he's... Mm. Boxing the years off you that you just keep going. Hopefully the bell's gonna go, you know. And you, you, get a <laughs> break, you get a break, you know. Yeah. And the thing about Mick Dowling was that he didn't believe in three minute rounds. If he was enjoying the round, oh, it went Jesus. up fucking six oh, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely do believe that you, you just gotta keep going, you know. Mm. Uh, mm. Someone asked me a question before about what's recession proof. We're, this is after the recession and we had opened up a couple of shops during the recession so people yeah. were saying how are you able to do it what are you recession proof and I just said no hard work is recession proof mm. now I like it. Mm. you know uh, that might sound a bit buzzy but I do believe that if you hit a wobble keep going yeah you know just keep yeah. going if you have total faith and confidence in what you do and what your idea is or what your business is you're going to get loads and loads of wobbles. We're getting them now with the, the high uh, high bills. Yeah. Yeah. Bill. They are freaking crazy. They are crippling. Mm. And, you know, but what are you going to do? you got to keep going and you'll eventually it'll be light at the end of the tunnel. You hope. Yeah. You know, yeah. you just got to keep going. So you're going to get bang. You get up, brush yourself down, Declan, and keep going. And, you know, the strong ones will survive. And if you don't survive, well, then it probably wasn't for you. And yeah, you find, you find something else. Something else, you know? but you keep going in another direction. You just just keep going, you know. Yeah. You just don't let it. No, it's easier said than done. But yeah. if I've had the dark days and the challenging days in my business life where you yeah. question yourself. I'm not able to do this. I should have stayed in Super Queen. I'm a failure. No, I've mm. failed here. But you just kind of, you know, you go through them dark moments, but you just yeah. pick yourself up and say, nah, fuck this. Yeah, we yeah. Home. We can what's, do this. What's the next small action I can take here that creates a bit of positive momentum? Yeah, and nobody cares, mm. Declan. As I said to you, nobody, you're, <laughs> you're on your own, so you just keep yeah. going. And Love it. I suppose, advice to my younger self, you know, I made loads of mistakes as a young man. I made loads of them. Um I don't, didn't let them define me, you know, they definitely shaped me. I didn't make yeah. them a second time, you know, and um, I'm very lucky that I, I hang around with a real good group of guys that I grew up with, that we're still pals with, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. when you surround yourself with good people, Declan, you know what I mean, you, you'd be okay, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I love that as well. It doesn't define you. I think uh, maybe too many people kind of cling on to the past as an anchor instead of saying, right, what did I learn from that? And then letting themselves, well, not even letting themselves off, but taking a learning and just, as you say, making sure it doesn't happen again. I think that's important because you, what's the point in keeping beating yourself up about things? It's just taking energy away from doing something positive and something good. Yeah. You know? I do feel sorry for, I think it's a certain generation. I don't know. I'm, I'm revealing my age here, but like we didn't have much as a generation. You know what I mean? Uh, with great fun, I tell you, I had more fun yeah. than now that we had great crack. We really yeah. did. We didn't, thankfully, we didn't have any phones and so no one could record half the shit we got up to. <laughs> so, where yeah. I feel sorry for the kids nowadays. I feel sorry. There's a lot more pressure on people, I think, mm. that they have to look, live their best life. I know it's, it's, it's a buzzword, but if you don't have to live your best life. You have to live your life. And yeah. your life, whereas best life for you, not mm. for 50 likes or 100. How many people look views? It's yeah. I feel sorry. It's pretty sad, and you know some of the stuff we got up to as kids is gone. There's no photograph to say, but this is what you were like at three o'clock in the morning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of it's easier, I think, for a certain generation to move forward. Whereas yeah. you know the current generation is probably a lot of reminders of some of the mistakes, and we've all made yeah. mistakes. We'll all keep making them, and you just can't let them define you. Again, yeah. easier said than done, you know. Brilliant advice. And um, Thomas, then what would be your like top uh, 
Like just bring us a little bit through your business journey. And I know I'm looking for the condensed version, but you've done great things, obviously, and you had your setbacks early on. And what would be maybe, you know, your proudest moment and your biggest learning to share from 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 the years in business and as you say, working as well for yourself, but also building a great team? Well, I suppose that my proudest moment was probably opening my first shop in uh, December 2005. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without the help of uh, Spar Ireland, uh, John Clodesy, you know, and obviously you, you need people behind you. I have a pretty cool wife that's mm -hmm. gives me the freedom to do what I need to do. Yeah. Uh, there's no issues there. Um, I lost a lot of money for six months, seven months of that business uh, mm -hmm. just by making wrong decisions. But we kind of fixed that and then we, we, we got that right. Mm -hmm. um, the important thing is to have good people around you. I'm very lucky. Uh, I've got really good people around me. Uh, mm -hmm. Sandra McCormick, who's my general manager, you've met her. She's met me since day one. Yeah. Her on, you know, with me since the beginning. My financial director, uh, Gary Carlin, he's with me a long time as well. So you've got yourself, you surround yourself with good people. Mm -hmm. People are on the same page as you, you know, people that are willing to say no to you. You know, mm -hmm. you, don't want Love yes, that. you don't want yes people around you. You want people that are going to challenge you. Because yeah. as you know, sometimes we make a lot of wrong decisions and we think differently as entrepreneurs or self-employed and you say, okay, right, let's do this. And you need someone to turn around and say, no, that won't work. And here's mm -hmm. why it won't work. You know, instead of having Brilliant. people say, yeah, great idea, that's a great idea, Thomas, mm -hmm. great, great, and then it fails. And then they say, well, I didn't think it was going to work. And anyway, well, why didn't you tell me? So, yeah. it, you know, surround yourself with good people that are willing to challenge you, challenge your mm. ideas, and challenge the thought process, you know? And I also think you do, it's kind of a little bit counterintuitive to people who want to say yes all the time, but when you do have the courage and your convictions to say no and then back it up, and, and then you kind of, you come to a decision together, That I think that's almost it builds a rapport with people, doesn't it? The fact that you were able to have that openness and communication that you felt confident enough in yourself to, do you know what I mean? To give a different opinion on, on that and chat it out. Well, if you're building a team, if you're building a business, you won't do it on your own. I thought I could yeah. do it on my own and I realised that for a few years that I can't. So mm. the quicker you're able to uh, let go some responsibility to other people, the quicker and the better that you will actually become a better all around manager of people that when you're able to let go because we are, we're control freaks. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. that's what we are. We just, we want, because no one thinks the way we think, but we're wrong. Everyone thinks, everyone mm -hmm. adds some value to your business, you know, and if you're yeah. willing to let that go, and people are going to make mistakes and you're, it's, you encourage people to make mistakes. If you make a mistake, so what? I mean, there was always a, a saying, get into trouble for doing something. Don't get into trouble for doing nothing. Standing so, still. Do yeah. yeah, you do something. So you kind of, you have to be open to that. And if you're mm -hmm. open to, to that, you know, that helps that whole process of building your team around you. Um, I think another, I suppose, tip would be the word, you got to be selfish with your, with your time as well. Mm -hmm. You know, in a sense, you got to make sure you're okay. And that yeah. you're taking that bit of time out for yourself, whether it's go for a walk, but at your yeah. day, you have something. I happen to do mine before I get to work, so I'm fine. Yeah. But, during, but during the day, you, you have to be selfish with your time where you turn around and say, oh, this is going to take 20 minutes. I'm mm. going to go for a walk. I'm going to listen to a podcast or whatever. And, and yeah. I think that, that gives you that. you got to be selfish. And I love yeah. that because that comes to that time or money question, you know, and a lot of people will say they value their time more. And it's like, well, you wouldn't leave your, you, you leave your calendar a lot more open that, than you would your wallet, you know, you wouldn't leave your wallet out for people to come take a five, a yeah. 10 or a 20. But yet sometimes we, we're we giving away our calendar to people and um, maybe just to be polite, maybe because we don't want to say no to things that wouldn't be serving, you know. And I'm not saying you have to say no to everything as well, because I know yeah. that's not your point, because you do give a lot of time to, yeah. to people like myself. And I know you do things with local GA and all as well, which yeah. I admire yeah. too. So. Um, but but I think being strategic that we do at different periods of our life have to say no for our own wellness yeah. and be selfish and make time for those walks like you mentioned. And that actually just runs on to my next question would be um, would be your three top tips for, I know you've kind of gone into some of them, but if you have anything to add on it in terms of looking after your own health and wellness while being a high performer in, in the different areas of your life, the sporting side, the family side and the uh, 
and um, you know the 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 business side. I suppose we, we I'd say over the last I don't know forty minutes of the chat, we've we've covered some of them, you know, and you're probably repeating some of it. And um, for me personally, it's sport, you know. And what we had a back for business meeting last Monday, and I'm, mm. I'm doing a further development where you're helping people already in business to further develop their business in the different mm. uh, different avenues. So we were in the, the group, and I asked before, and I, I did it with you guys as well. Mm-hmm. I asked them all the question, uh, what do you do for you? And every one of them, uh, there was seven, seven uh, entrepreneurs in this room, didn't do anything. But they all used to do stuff for themselves. They used to mm-hmm. run, they used to play badminton. Amazing. I used to do this, I used to do that. Mm. I, I, I kind of said to them, listen, none of this is ever going to work unless you get yourself back something for you and yeah. that like, that means leaving the phone putting a bit of music on going for a walk going for a run do something that has absolutely nothing got to do with your business yeah because, love it you know and so that would be the biggest tip i'd give to anybody in business or anybody starting up or anybody who's thinking of starting out do something you've got to free up your time in your week for you and um, because if your project becomes 24 7 you're going to make mistakes. Mm. So I find, uh, I'm over in the UK on Wednesday, there's a new food the food area after all the Babacy buildings and going down to have oh, a I go over on my own. Mm-hmm. And I know I get so much from, from going down there that I will bring back into my business. Now I'm on the phone, yeah. I've gone from your business, but I'll calendar myself out from the day. My yeah. team will look after what's going on and I'll come back energised with plenty of ideas. You know, so yeah. that, that doesn't happen all the time. That's, every couple of months I do stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, that's but amazing. It's about staying right. curious. Yeah, oh, that's it's so important. Mm. Don't rest on your laurels. Don't mm. think, and I've said this to you guys before with startups, they all of a sudden they see the money coming in and they think, I've made it. <laughs> you have it actually, because unfortunately as you start getting better and more, uh, more recognized in your field or in your business, uh, unfortunately people start looking at you and saying, okay, what are they doing? Maybe yeah. we can do a bit of that. You know, I'm sure you see yeah. it. in your business, you come up with a good idea. Three weeks later, one of your competitors has a s- yeah. similar idea, you know. You so say you- that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> but so you, yeah. you have to you have to constantly reinvent yourself and don't rest on your roles. Constantly mm-hmm. challenge yourself. Um, yeah. So constantly Amazing. challenge yourself. Um, do Stay curious. Work. Yeah. And sleep. Sleep is yeah. the trick. Make sure you're bloody sleeping. And mm-hmm. eat healthy and, and, and looking after yourself. And another mm-hmm. one is bring, bring your, your partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, wherever they are, that special person in your life. Yeah. Bring them on the journey with you, Declan. People forget about this. Yeah. Now, if you're a single person, you don't have to worry about that. But bring your folks on the but bring somebody yeah. on the journey with you. Explain to them what you're doing. So they'll understand some of the times when you come in and you're not in great form. They'll get mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? But if you're not communicating with them and telling them, listen, fucking this great idea I had, your man's at the copy, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, so it's important that part to celebrate with them as well the good things. Yeah, yeah, it's important. Amazing. Th- thanks a million, Thomas. Look, there's so much there for people. Can I just ask? I I, I know you're not too too big on social media. Is there anywhere pe- people can follow up in the show notes? I'll include a link to Back for Business as well for people because they'll obviously get to either work with great people like your yourself. They will get to work with a, a lead entrepreneur like yourself uh, who's full of full of knowledge. So I'll include that. Um, is there anywhere else people can find out more? Or well, I, I don't put stuff up on social media, you know, but I'm on Twitter. Lovely. Uh, look, thanks a million, Thomas. You're so generous yeah. with your time. No problem, anytime.